This call is now being recorded. Okay, so the new unit is on coordinate geometry. It's a mixture of kind of algebra and geometry together. Uh, so it's kind of leading on from the last one. Today's date is the 8th of December, and that will be the title. Okay, so uh, the coordinate geometry, well, you, I'm almost certain you came across this before. You definitely would come across this in a number of places perhaps in real life. One of those real life places is maybe you came across in humanities. If we have, uh, if you sometimes are given a, a map, uh, it can be broken up into uh, sectors. So perhaps we have A, B, C, D, E here, and then down the side you might have, okay, thank you, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a uh, map can be broken up into sections. And I could say, okay, where is, uh, say there was a town there, so that's uh, Dublin in Ireland. Where is Dublin located on this map? And you would go to, well, you grid reference it. It would be B4, wouldn't it? So Dublin would be um, in grid reference B4. Often this is used in things like orienteering or just uh, general map reading. You can see that. So if you've ever done orienteering, uh, perhaps you came across this. But this comes. Uh, this is the humanities version. Now, uh, in maths, we take it a little bit a step further than that, and we do something called the Cartesian plane. So definitely take down that Cartesian plane. That's what it's called. It was developed by a guy called René Descartes. He was French. And it's taking grid references just a step forward into, into maths. And perhaps you've seen this before. It uses two number lines. The title is Coordinate Geometry. So what it does is it uses two number lines and combines them. It has our normal number line like this. So you start here with zero in the middle, one, two, three, four. Uh, we did this last year, so it should be a, a revision really for you. So that's our normal number line and they call that number line X. And that continues on forever in both directions. And it also has a Y number line which goes up and down. So this one goes left and right, and this one goes up and down. So one, two, three, four, minus one, minus two, minus three, and, minus, and it keeps going on. So positive direction is up. And it's called the y-axis, and that's called the x-axis. So x, we usually put for short, that is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis. So I haven't left myself much room to write axis. I'd like you to draw a sketch of that in your notes, please. So uh, we're going to need a ruler, if you have it. Uh, if you don't. Yeah, we've done it before as well, Elan, so it's okay. All right. So that is something called a Cartesian plane. Now, similar to uh, our map up here of this brilliant map of whatever island that was. If we had a map on this Cartesian plane, we can locate points um, as well. So uh, if I wanted to find, where, well, what's the, that place there? Where is that place? Well, specifically, it's a lot more accurate. Um, it is at just beyond two on the x-axis. So my x it would be just beyond 2, let's say it's 2.1. And my y-axis, it refers to the positive y-axis as just 2. And I give that a grid reference, 
2.1 for x and 2 for y. When we give a grid reference using the Cartesian plane, x is the first number and y is the second number. It's more accurate than our uh, geography or humanities equivalent above, which just gives a very uh, general area, whereas our Cartesian plane can be broken down because it's a number line. We know there's different decimals between two and three, and we can be way more specific. So, you know, I'm a mathematician, I think the Cartesian plane is better. Okay. I can also find a, any point on this, so I can name any point on this. So let's pick a point down here. This is, well, I need to find out what its x-coordinate is first, so I go to the x-axis, where it's in line with, well, it's in line with negative 2 here. So the x-coordinate of that would be negative 2. Always do the x first in these brackets, remember. And then I look at my y-coordinate, and I go down, how far is it on y? It's in the negative, it's negative. So we can have some negative coordinates because we're dealing with number lines. Number lines, of course, go into integers, positive and negative numbers, and they go into all the numbers in between. Okay. So you may be asked at some stage, you will be asked today to uh, name what's what's what to give coordinates of a point on a Cartesian plane, and that's how you do it. You would x coordinate first, y coordinate second. And of course, we did this last year as well. All right, sorry, my battery is running low, so let's be perhaps quicker than usual today. All right, so um, let's move on. Let, let's move on to uh, some a little bit of theory. You don't need to take down the second one. You can put it on your first one. There's names for these uh, four areas. There's one, two, three, four, the special areas. They're called quadrants. This is the first one. First quadrant. It's the first one because it has positive x and positive y. So it's the one we usually or more often deal with. This is the first quadrant. Top right is the first. Now it kind of goes weird after that. The second quadrant is actually this way. That's the second quadrant. It moves anti-clockwise. Third quadrant is here. So if you're referring to what quadrant a point is in, you would say, well, this point is in the third quadrant, the bottom left corner. And the final one is called the fourth quadrant. They weren't very exciting with the names. First, second, third, fourth. The point where they meet in the middle has a very special coordinate. Its coordinate is zero and x. The origin. And zero and y, thank you. It is the origin. I don't know who said that, but origin. It is the origin of all numbers, perhaps, but maybe not. Uh, it is zero, zero. It's a special number, it's the origin. Okay. What happens if a point is on one of these lines? So right here. What happened right on the line? Well, that's okay. That's just the point. We'll let it go along the x-axis. What's its x-value? Three. Go along the y-axis. What's its y-value? Well, it's in line here. It's at zero. If it's on one of the axes, it's going to be going to have a zero coordinate. Okay, so this should be a bit of revision from last year. So I'm not going to go into any further... Uh, note-taking on this. So some important words, you're going to need to know quadrant, which quadrant each is in. Remember, first, second, third, fourth, so split up into quarters. Zero, zero is called the origin. When we're writing a point, we give the x-coordinate first and then the y-coordinate. And that's the basic theory. We're just going to do today. So there is going to be a worksheet today. Before we do the worksheet, though, we're going to do a Kahoot on just uh, placing each of these in uh, quadrants. Okay? So I'm just going to switch cameras. Give me a second. <laughs> 